Steve. Hello, everyone. So my name is Amanda Jobbins. I am the SVP of Demand Generation and Marketing here at Oracle International, and I am also a Dubai resident. I moved here um, a year ago from London, and I'm loving living in the UAE. So it's a thrill and delight to have so many dignitaries and senior business leaders with us here at the World Trade Center. Thank you for coming. What I wanted to do was um, actually take you on a journey, a journey with the honeybees. Now, why should you care about honeybees? You should care because they pollinate 70% of our food crops. Without honeybees, we will face starvation, quite literally. So I want to bring this to you in an innovative way. So I'm going to take you through the journey of a honeybee hive through augmented reality today. So I have an augmented reality magical assistant who's going to join me on stage. Simon, do you want to come on up? So Simon is going to bring up a honeybee hive for you all to take a look at. Now, here in Dubai, um, we import 95% of our honeybees to pollinate the crops that, that do grow here in the UAE. But admittedly, in this part of the world, uh, much of the food produce is imported from other countries, from Egypt, from Pakistan, amongst others. And if you're wondering what kinds of crops honeybees pollinate, they pollinate coffee and cocoa, strawberries and blueberries, as well as making sure we have a huge array of beautiful flowering plants on our planet, something we all enjoy. So here we go. Here is our honeybee hive. You see that? So on the left-hand side of the screen, from your perspective, you'll see our KPI panel. So like any business, like your business, it's important to monitor the health of your business. And here, we're monitoring the health of the honeybee hive. So what we can see at the top is an alert dial. We can see a sensor that is recording the weight of the hive, because that will tell us things about the health of the hive. And we're also monitoring audio signals, the audio signals of bees. You will know, of course, that bees make a lot of noise. They buzz. We'll hear some bees in a minute. They buzz, and you can tell a lot about what's going on in a honeybee hive from the noise the bees make. And finally, we're looking at the temperature. During the summer, the temperature of a honeybee hive should be between about 25 degrees and 34 degrees Celsius. And what we can see here is that this is a healthy hive. Weight looks normal, audio signals look normal, temperature is normal. Now, at the top of the hive there, you're seeing some data signals. Essentially, on these hives, we're placing sensors, together with our partner, the World Bee Project. Now, the World Bee Project contacted Oracle to talk about how we could connect hives around the world and learn more about what is making bees thrive or die. It's a very sad fact that up to 40% of the honeybee populations in the world today are facing extinction. So this is an existential crisis for all of us, not just the honeybees, and we need to find out why. So we need to compare this data between different countries. So on top of this honeybee hive that we've built with the World Bee Project, you can see the data being transported back from the weather sensor. So we're combining the data about the bees and the data about the weather and environmental conditions, and we can also integrate other data sources about what's happening in the local ecosystem. And uh, as you might have noticed, for those of you who came in a couple of days ago, uh, we've had a bit of rain here in Dubai, so I think it is about to rain. Yeah, there it goes. Should have bought my umbrella. Wow, it's a big storm. Anyone who was on the Sheikh Zayed Road two days ago will know about the, the big storm we had. Bees don't actually fly in the rain, by the way. They go back into their hive, very sensible. So let's take a look inside the hive and learn a little bit more about the role of honeybees. So let's open up, if we can, our honeybee hive. Oh, hang on a second, the temperature's dropping. Something's wrong. Ah, so if the temperature of the hive drops, you'll remember I said this could be an indicator of something going wrong in the hive, hive a hive health issue. It could be that the queen has died, for example. The, queen, the, the honeybee hive only has one queen. They need the queen. So this is, a, no, this is not a good signal, the temperature dropping. And you can see how the KPIs can alert us and the beekeepers, most importantly, to these changing conditions so that they can take remediatory action. Now, I think we've got, yeah, we're back to normal. That's good. Phew. So let's take a look inside the honeybee hive now and learn a little bit about the bees. A honeybee hive is a complex organization, much like our businesses. And here you can see the main player, the queen bee. 
You will have heard about the queen before, I'm sure. You can see her there. So the queen bee only has two functions in life. Uh, she has to lay fertilized eggs. She is the only bee that can lay fertilized eggs. And she emits a pheromone, a smell, a scent, that unites all the bees in the colony and keeps hive stability. It also attracts male honeybees when she leaves the hive to go on a mating flight. Secondly, there are the nurse bees. You can see them there surrounding the queen, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more shortly because some of the changes in their behavior can tell us important things about the hive as well. The nurse bees, as you can imagine, their role is to look after the queen, a bit like a personal trainer or your nutritionist if you're lucky enough to have one. Thirdly, we have the drones. The drones are male bees, and they only have one job in life. Any ideas what that job might be? It's to mate with the queen. Other than that, he can just sit about and have a good time. He doesn't even have a sting, so he can't even protect the hive, unfortunately. But very, very important that the drone mates with the queen to ensure the survival of the honeybee colony. Finally, then, we have the worker bees. Now, the worker bees are our multitaskers, much like all of us. They take on many different roles in their lifetime, in fact. They'll start off life perhaps cleaning the honeycomb or, or nursing smaller bees. They will clean the honeycomb. They will search for food. They will find new locations for a new hive. And they will also protect the hive from any kind of security threat. So they are amazing, amazing creatures, the, the worker bees. They're all female. And apparently, some research has shown that when they change job, they can actually get younger and more intelligent. So I think there's still more we need to learn from the honeybees. So these are the roles of the honeybees in the hive. Now, if you are a beekeeper, it is very important that you keep your bees. Why? Because your crop requires bees to pollinate, as we spoke about earlier. So one of the signals that we can detect by putting a sensor on the hive is whether the bee colony is about to swarm. Now, a bee colony swarms if they want to reproduce. It's sort of a reproduction of the, of, the, of the whole hive. And they do it when they run out of space in the hive. Now, we're able to tell. You can see some signals there on the KPIs on our, on our alert screen. We've got some signals telling us it's pre-swarm activity. How do we know this? We know it because when the hive is about to swarm, when the bees are about to swarm, the bees put the queen on a diet because the queen's going to have to fly some distance to go and find a new location for the colony. So the nurse bees that surround the queen, you remember seeing them earlier, they're flapping their wings extra hard at night. And we can pick up that change in acoustic signal and it will tell us up to two or three weeks ahead of time that the bees are about to swarm. And this is a problem. As I say, the beekeeper does not want to lose their bees. So in this case, unfortunately, we only just got the signal, and it looks like the bees are going to swarm. Here they go. Good thing I wore my beekeeping jacket. Wow, there they are. Watch out, everybody. So there was some incredible work done by, oh, they're noisy today, by, <laughs> by a gentleman called Carl von Frisch, who is an Austrian scientist, and he found out that the bees do a special dance called the Waggle Dance. He, in fact, won a Nobel Prize for this discovery uh, that enable the bees to communicate where they want to go, either direction to a flower or direction to a new hive location or a possible good site for a new hive. So these bees are buzzing around, and uh, they've seen this lovely tree over here, so I think they're going to go and settle on that tree. Why don't you come over here, bees? And they can have a little rest on the branch while they work out where their new home is going to be. Now, if I'm a beekeeper and I had been alerted, even if I got this alert late in the day, I would be able to go to where the bees have settled and scoop them into a new hive and thereby keep them. Now, it was interesting to me to find out that here in Dubai, we do have an indigenous bee, the Arabian bee. And it actually lives in nature. It hasn't been domesticated. And it has open honey combs. And when it swarms uh, and lands, perhaps because of large urbanization here on our balcony in our apartment, you know, quite often people might call pest control or something and, and try to get the bees destroyed. So I'm very keen to tell all of you that you spread the message and tell your friends not to do that. 
We need the bees, and we need them to prosper. So uh, we, we've rescued these bees and put them back in the hive, and I think our hive uh, metrics are back to normal. So one of the other things that um, threatens bee life are uh, pests uh, or predators. And there are a number of these predators, and one of the most dangerous for the bee colony is the Asian hornet. Now, through visual analytics uh, with the World Bee Project, we were able to identify when a hornet is approaching the hive. The hornet would kill all the bees and take all the honey and will destroy the hive. And here comes a hornet, I think. We're just picking it up on our visual analytics right now. Do we hear it? Take a look. There you go. There's the hornet. OK. We don't like the hornet. He's going to threaten our hive. So now, if these are Asian bees, they can actually defend themselves against the hornet. They will surround it, and they will heat it to death. Not very nice. But bees can survive at a temperature two degrees higher than a hornet. So they will actually do something called thermoballing and kill the hornet. But European bees can't defend themselves against this predator. So the beekeeper could take some preventative action, perhaps put something over the covering of the hive, or come and get rid of the, the hornet himself, him or herself. Now, the visual analytics here, we found in working with the World Bee Project, it was quite an expensive way to do the analytics. And in fact, because the hornet flaps its wings more slowly than bees, we can in fact pick up that it's a hornet just through an audio signal. So uh, in this case, uh, it looks like the bees have seen off the hornet, and uh, all is well. I think they're, they're expelling him from the hive, so that's good news. There must be some Asian bees there, I think. So we've talked about a pre-swarm. We've talked about security threats. And one of the other ways that we need to get data from this hive into a database so that we can analyze it something called the Global Hive Network I was talking about earlier, which flows its data into the Oracle Autonomous Database, where we could use analytics to analyze it. One of the other ways we need to get data into that database is through visual inspection. So there are some things only a beekeeper can tell when they actually look at their hive. So Oracle, together with the World Bee Project, developed a digital assistant. Steve was just talking about digital assistants. And we developed one for the World Bee Project. It's called the Bee Bot. Um, and so let's take a look at how that works. I'll be the beekeeper in this story. So I'm going to do a, a hive inspection now. So let's start up the uh, chatbot. Welcome to the Bee Bot Assistant. I am listening. What would you like to do? I'd like to do a brood inspection, please. Just to make sure I understand, you'd like to record your brood status? Yes, please. Which beehive do you want to record? I bought my London one, Chelsea 2. Let's record your beehive's brood. Do you see eggs? Yes, I can see some eggs. Please tell me the volume of the drone cells in your beehive. Is it low, medium, or high? The drone cells are low. Please tell me which brood pattern it is from the following options. Very patchy, a little spotty, or compact and uniform? Uh, they're compact and uniform. Can you see larvae? Yes, I can see larvae. I am about to record the brood inspection and I want to make sure I got it right. Beehive Chelsea 2, brood eggs spotted, yes, brood larvae spotted, yes, brood pattern, compact and uniform, drone cells low. Is it all correct? Yes, that's correct. Recording your brood was a success. Also, remember I can record your queen if spotted. Anything else today? Not today, thank you. Thanks for using Beebot. Hope to hear from you soon. You definitely will. Fantastic, eh? So you can imagine if you're operating in any environment where you need to wear protective clothing or where handling a mobile phone or taking notes, data points, uh, a digital assistant such as this can be invaluable. So this is the other way we can get data, not just into our applications, for example, give me an expense report in our Oracle applications, but also to ingest data 
to a global analytics project such as the WorldBee project. So this is obviously the data from a single hive, but I've been talking about the um, WorldBee project's global hive network initiative. And that's where Oracle has begun to work with the WorldBee project. It is our aspiration together that around the world, every beehive, every beehive is connected to the global hive network. If we can do this and take all the data points from all those hives, put them into the Oracle database, apply Analytics Cloud, we, together with researchers and scientists, can find out what is making bee colonies thrive. We can spot particular trends in the growth of certain types of crops, something called precision apiculture. And we can essentially make sure that food security is maintained. This is also a way to maintain the livelihoods of the millions and millions of smallholder farmers that exist around the world. In India, nearly 600 million small farmers alone are relying on bee pollination of their crops. So by taking the 1 million data points from the hive, putting it into the Oracle Autonomous Database, we're able to make that information then available to the researchers and scientists who are studying this area so that they can draw those important conclusions and findings and share that information with governments around the world and other farmers and people in the agricultural industry as well. So with that, I hope you have found the uh, bees as inspiring as I have and everyone here at Oracle has. I hope this has inspired you with the art of the possible around taking data from around the globe and what you can achieve by putting it in an incredible, fast database like the Oracle Autonomous Database and give that information to people who can help save both the pollinators, the people, and the planet. Thank you.